Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I'm back, finally, with What If Deku was sent to Demon Slayer. I leaked a, a little bit by little bit of this series. I have a lot that I added. I mean, obviously, you can see the custom um, art that I have here. I've been doing a lot of more custom art. I've been getting a lot um, more commissioned, but this one especially, I really liked this one. And also, I have a little bit of extra spice that you'll be able to see as we go throughout the video. Um, so, I'm just going to get right into it. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time. And let's get right into the what if. Let's get it. Deku falls from the sky at insane speeds, screaming his lungs off, and lands in some sort of courtyard. What? Where am I? Deku looks around to be stared at by various people. The master of the place approaches Deku and in a calm voice says, Now, who are you? Deku stares at him in shock and looks around to see various other people that are called the Hashira. In an instant, the wind Hashira is up to his feet and grabs Deku. Now who the hell are you, and what do you want? Deku looks at the man in shock, but slaps him away. The master of the demon slayers tell the wind, tells the wind Hashira to calm down. Now, if you don't mind, can you please explain to us what you are doing here? Deku then responds. I'm sorry to intrude, but it seems that I was sent to this world, and I don't know how. Flashback to the battle with Deku and Shigaraki, and Shigaraki speaks. Come on, kid. Let's end this right here. They both charge at each other, and just as they collide, Deku poofs into the sky and begins falling. Now back to present. That's all I remember. But what now? The master smiles. Well... Maybe you are here for a reason. Now what's your name? Azuku Midoriya. Hero name, Deku. The master then tells the Hashira that anyone who, who would fall from the sky and not die must have some potential. Well, Azuku, in this world there are many demons that go around eating humans, but who you see here are known as the Hashira, or the top demon slayers. I would like you to actually join us. Azugu smiles and says that he is a hero, so turning that down wouldn't be right. I assumed you would say that. Well, demons are only able to be killed by the sun, or when their heads are cut off by a particular blade. I would like to have one of our very own Hashira train you in one of their breathing styles. Azuku looks confused and asks what he means by a breathing style, and he explains that there is a breathing technique that will increase a human's strength, and he will need, and he will basically need it to defeat humans. Azuku tries to basically show off one for all, and realizes that he can only output five percent right now. Oh, I guess I have to accept your offer. It seems my quirks are only at 5% strength currently. Must have something to do with this world, I guess. The master asks what does he mean by quirks, and he shows off Black Whip, One For All, Smoke Screen, and the rest of his quirks that he currently has, but obviously only being able to show it at like 5% capacity. The master asks, or everyone is shocked, including the Hashira, that it, that is, th that this boy does have a decent amount of strength, even without a breathing style. Well then, Izuku, one of the Hashira will be training you. Now, would anyone like to volunteer? A woman with purple eyes then steps up. I can train him to be a demon slayer. The master smiles and introduces Izuku to Shinobu, and tells him that he is in very capable hands. Shinobu takes Izuku to the Butterfly Mansion, and he tries to say hello to another girl there, but she just looks at him, smiles, without saying a word. Izuku asks who she is, and Shinobu tells him that she is another student of hers by the name of Kanao, and she doesn't, well, talk very much. 
they get set uh, Zuku settled, which doesn't take very long because he, well, doesn't have anything, and they head to the dojo. Now, to begin our training. Shinobu then started training Izuku in the art of swordsmanship, but also how to use concentration breathing. Initially, Shinobu was planning to teach him insect breathing, but when he started training with concentration breathing, Izuku spun, swinging his sword, and Shinobu stared in complete awe. This wasn't just flower breathing, it was different. Izuku had some sort of nature breathing which was far above anything her her sister or herself could have could have done. Shinobu smiles as she watches her new student learn a breathing style for himself, and she even occur encourages him to make his own forms, which by the end of his training, which was about one year long, he had three forms created, and in the works with two more. Toward the end of the training, Azuku began trying to talk to with, with Kanao, but she would always flip a coin and end up not saying a word, until they were two days out from the final selection. So, I've been meaning to ask, Kanao, how long have you been training with Shinobu? She flips her coin and it lands on heads, and she doesn't speak. Why do you flip that coin anyways? She flips it once again and it lands on tails. I flipped this coin to choose if I should talk to you. Since it landed on heads, I responded. Why let a coin choose, though? Well, it's simple. Nothing really matters to me. So, how could I choose for myself? Azuku is shocked, but asks for her coin, and she gives it to him. I'm gonna throw this in the air, and if it lands on heads, you talk without using this coin. Using your heart. But if it lands on tails, then you can do, well, you can do what you want. So if you want to flip the coin, you can. Azuku flips the coin, and when it lands, it's heads. He smiles and tells her that now she can speak to her heart's content. And if her heart doesn't care, then she will need to find something to care about. Azuku smiles and is about to leave, but Kanao asks how he was able to get it to land on heads, and he just smiles and says that sometimes fate just works out that way. Azuku heads back inside and both Kanao and Azuku, Azuku head off to the final selection two days later. I know you are ready for the final selection. Good luck, Izuku. They eventually arrive and are greeted by two proctors that explain what the exam will consist of, which is basically survive in a demon-filled forest for one week. They all enter and Azuku and Kanao split up immediately. Now, if I can just gather all the demon slayers, I may be able to keep everyone alive. But Doria runs through the forest, gathering as many people as possible, telling, telling them and guiding them to a certain area of the mountain. Once he got at least most of the people there, he used his first form. Nature breathing, first form, aromatherapy. His first form allows him to give off a scent to demons, but in this case, he created a scent around the area where the future slayers were that would tell the demons that there were no humans in this area. Azuku then left the, the area searching for more people until he spots a boy with a scar on his forehead facing a massive hand demon in defense of another slayer. Nature breathing, first form, aromatherapy, aggressive scent. The demon smells this, and so so does the other boy, and they look both at Izuku. The boy by the name of Tanjiro yells for him to get out of the way. Izuku, Izuku's body begins to electrify with 10% of one for all, which he basically was able to unlock while he was training. Don't worry about me, just get up the mountain. Tanjiro looks in shock at Izuku as he stares down the hand demon. Nature breathing. Second form, lightning slash. Tantra watches as Azuku jumps up and slices through the neck of the hand demon, killing it. Oh, you, what's your name? Oh, I'm Tanjiro Komodo, Azuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you. Now follow me. Azuku then takes the rest of the slayers back to the area he made, and most, if not all, or every slayer made it out alive. See, Kanal? 
It looks like everyone was able to survive. She smiles at him and just shakes her head as they head out of the forest due to the seven days being over. The proctors begin to explain but about, about what's next, but then a boy by the name of Genya, pissed, walks up to the proctors and tries to grab one of their hand, or heads. Tantra is about to step in, but Black Whips grab Genya and pull him back toward Izuku. Calm down, Genya. Let's stay calm here. Genya pushes him away and scoffs and basically just lines back up around the proctors. They explain that everyone must clo basically choose their oars and that will and will basically be made into a sword. Everyone does so, including Izuku, and eventually they head back to the Hashiro Mansion. They are greeted by Shinobu and are congratulated on their success. Izuku then continues his training and he actually trains with Kanao who is talking more and more, but little by little. Finally, the oars are created into their Nichi Ring swords, and Azuku's sword gets delivered. He grabs his sword, and the color changes, and green lightning swirls around it. He looks in awe at the sword and smiles as he looks at the handle, which is very similar to Shinobu's. Finally, the first mission of his Demon Slayer journey has arrived. While his bird, which is actually a white dove, dives down and lands on his shoulder. The dove speaks and tells him that a nearby lake seems to be swarmed with demons, or at least one, and the people around seem to be drowning, but they aren't in water. Azuku then says his goodbyes and heads out to his first mission. When he arrives, he enters a small village on the lake, and he approaches a man and a woman who are selling fish. Hey, um, can I buy some cooked cod? Uh, yes, of course, young man. You look new here. Yes, I actually am. My name is Izuku Midoriya, but feel free to just call me Izuku. Well then, just call me Palmer. Um, how much for the cooked cod, Palmer? Oh, good. For you, my good boy, free. First one is on the house. Izuku thanks him and they continue to talk. And Izuku says how amazing the cod is, and Palmer finally begins talking about what Izuku really wanted to hear. Yes, yes, thank you. Actually, we have been getting a lot less catches ever since people have been mysteriously, well, dying. I personally want to leave because I think it's a, de a demon-like monster, but my wife over here claims that there is no way. Azuku smiles and laughs as well and asks if they could maybe go on a walk and talk for a second. Palmer agrees and they begin talking. Yeah, now this demon, um, I need to know if there has been any pattern to end all the deaths. The man is shocked, thinking that there's no way he, like, Azuku actually believes him. Well, Azuku, uh, it seems to be going to every house. And frankly, I think we are next. The, per the people mysteriously die, but they look as if they were drowned or waterlogged. Azuku tells him that he is part of something called the Demon Slayer Corp, and that he is here because of that demon. The man is shocked and hugs him, and says that he knew he wasn't crazy. Uh, do, you th do you think I can stay with you for the night and try to catch the demon? Palmer agrees, and they make up an excuse, obviously, to his wife about why Izuku needs to stay. The moon then rises, and Izuku sits, uh, sits awake, or lays down awake, waiting for the demon to show up. The water below the house, though, begins to get displaced, and something creeps through the cracks of the floorboard. The creature walks over, and Izuku can feel his lungs start to fill up with water. He tries to focus, and his body begins to heat up, pushing his breath past his waterlogged lungs. Eventually, the water evaporates through his mouth, and the demon panics, but he is wrapped in vines. Now, what do we have here? The water mimic demon begins to panic, not, not being able to move or even slip through the, the, the vines. What? Let me go! You should be dead! Azuku pulls out his sword as Palmer and his wife run into the room, and he tells them to stay back. The demon tries to change his appearance, and he appears as a young boy. Please, mom, dad, 
save me. The two parents look on in shock and begin crying. The wife is about to charge at Izuku, but Palmer knows that this isn't real. Izuku squeezes the vines and slices the demon's head off. I'm sorry, both of you, that you had to see that. But I promise that was not your son. He was just mimicking your son. They both cry in, in each other's arms, but they are relieved that now they know their son is gone, but he is in a better place. Izuku is about to head out, but the couple stops him, saying that he can't go out at night, and they will always th that they can always he can always stay for the night, and that they will always be grateful for what he did. Azuku says that it's really no problem and agrees to stay for the night. The next morning, they give him a box with straps with tons of cooked fish. He says that he he wants to pay for it, but they refuse to let him. He eventually thanks them for the fish and he heads back off to the Hashira mansion at the request of his dove. When he arrives, he hears the master speaking with Tomioka and Shinobu about heading to the Natagomo forest or Mount, Natagomo mountain. Izuku then chimes in saying that sending to Hashira is unnecessary and that he will go he will go with Shinobu. The master smiles hearing this and tells both of them to go with Kanao and split the forest into three sections and try to get try to help as many people as possible. Shinobu and him then walk over basically to get Kanao and are talking. You know, Izuku, Kanao has been a lot more open to the idea of speaking on her own since you arrived. For that, I thank you. I'm glad to be called your sensei. Midoriya slightly blushes. You don't need to thank me, Shinobu. Um, I'm just doing what I feel is right. Shinobu smiles and they continue walking. They get Kanao and they head off to Natagumo Mountain. When they arrive, they split up and Izuku makes his way through the forest until he hears a loud explosion. And he runs over and sees Tanjiro slicing the head off a demon with a blaze of fire on his blade. Soon after though, the demon stands up once again. You almost had me. So close. But I cut my own head off before you could. Tanjiro tries to stand back up but can't because of his exhaustion and realizes that he may be dead. Rui is about to kill him. But then black whips surround Tanjiro and pull him away. Hey, you did really good, Tanjiro. Um, ready for round two? Tanjiro looks up. Azuku? A green aroma surrounds Tanjiro and he stands up, revitalized. Whoa, how did you do that? Azuku tells him that it that it's basically a conversation for another time and they both need to face down Rui together. Vines grab Rui and Izuku's body covers with in electricity. They both charge in and strike down Rui in an instant, killing him. But to make sure he is dead, Izuku does smash his head with vines. Yeah, sorry that was a bit brutal, but I need to make sure, at least this time. Tanjiro nods and is actually pretty shocked how much stronger Izuku is compared to him. And that, frankly, he really didn't need his help. They grab Nezuko, who is a demon, and Azuku realizes this and tilts his head. Tanjiro, that's a demon. You know that, right? Tanjiro explains that this this is no demon. It's his sister, and she's never hurt a human ever in her life. Azuku nods, and they begin to leave, but Kanao comes diving in, slicing at Nezuko. Midoriya blocks her strike and kicks her away. Azuku looks at Nezuko. Yeah, you might want to get going. Mm -hmm. Nezuko then runs with Tanjiro as Kanao chases with Azuku, trying to keep her away. Kanao ki kicks Azuku into a tree, but then he grabs her with some vines, slowing her down. Shinobu then comes, comes out of nowhere as well, trying to kill Nezuko. But Izuku grabs her sword with Black Whip and he throws her sword and picks up Nezuko and begins running until crows fly over them. Bring back Tanjiro, Komodo, and Nezuko! Back to the mansion! Izuku then looks at Nezuko. I assume that you are Nezuko, right? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Azuku smiles as Shinobu and Kanao approaches them. They both lecture him about what he did and he just smiles and puts his hand at the back of his head saying that he can't resist helping a child, it's just in his nature. He looks down to see that he was bit by many spiders and he faints. Well, not because of the poison though, but from, well, the fear of spiders. And that is a wrap on part one of this what if. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like and sub button. Also, make sure to comment down below any suggestions. This is what I want to do for the next part. The next part, I actually want to just do a whole new arc. As you guys saw, I did an arc, right? I did an arc um, with the, the water mimic demon. That's kind of like if you had the, uh, the, the, the swamp demon, that's kind of like what it was. I want to do a whole new arc. So if y'all have suggestions for a demon or maybe a made up demon or a demon from that already exists and you guys want to see it, let me know. Cause I plan to do a whole new arc before the, uh, the Mujin train arc. I want to do a brand new arc. I feel like it'd be really fun. So um, I want to, I want y'all suggestions. And obviously you guys are going to have a couple days to figure that out. So just let me know. Put comments like comment down below. Comment like crazy. Anything you want to see. And I'll see what I can do. This is supposed to be a fun series. And honestly, this is probably hands down my favorite write. And my favorite write up on a script. And I'm having tons of fun with this series. If you like the addition of uh, voice lines from different people. Which I had a female, I had a, um, a female on Fiverr do voice lines for me. Um, for Nezuko, Kanao, and Shinobu. And do you, if you like the manga panels, I'll try my best to bring those back. Obviously, those things take time. And that's why this video took so long to come out. But um, yeah, if y'all enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I appreciate all the love and support. And thank y'all for 10,000 subs. All right, later. I don't